Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. If you are new to the Keep Productive YouTube channel, welcome. It is great to have you here. And if you're a regular, welcome back to another video. So today what I'll be doing is diving into the likes of Todoist. Uh, I do this setup quite regularly, uh, a video about how I use it on a daily basis, workflow, sort of like details, I guess. Just giving you some context as much as I can because I feel like like I benefit from setup videos the way other people set up their videos and practical analogies of that just because it puts that in, into a bit of perspective on a daily basis and how it correlates to tasks. So what I'm going to do is show you how I use my to-do list application which is Todoist and go over a few details. Just before we start guys, if you are new to the channel, just hit subscribe. It'd be great to have you in the community um, and uh, you can join the Facebook group, which is pretty brand new too. So join those two. It'd be amazing to have you here. So here we are on my to-do setup. The first thing I would like to talk about is theme. Now, I actually had the blue theme for quite a few months, probably since July, when I did my last to-do setup video all the way till now. I've recently as of like three days, move to the neutral theme. And again, um, what you can do to change the theme is just go to settings and then hit themes. And uh, I'm using neutral. I quite like this uh, explainer here, what it looks like, um, but I, I really enjoy neutral. I actually enjoyed the blue, which is blueberry on the themes for quite a while, uh, but I'm sort of getting used to neutral. I always come seem to come back to neutral just because it seems to blend in quite nicely with the background and things like that. So that is something that is quite exciting. Now, as you can see here, the tasks themselves, I want to talk about a little bit of detail. Uh, what I tend to do a lot now these days is uh, attach labels. So as you can see, every single task has a label in it, mainly because what it does is it increases the, the distance between each task and it sort of spreads it out a little more. So for example, if I were to uh, knock these two out, and just bring them down. It sort of is a bit more like rapid fire, but whereas when I have like, oh, I spot YouTuber on there. Uh, whereas when I have like Mac and active, then I give that there and it gives a bit of an indicator. Now, the good thing with these is I actually have a couple of these set up so that I know that these tasks are gonna be a bit more intense or uh, so for example, active, I can be like, oh, active, uh, you know, I need a bit of energy for that. Or Mac, I need the Mac to complete that task. So it gives me a bit of an idea uh, for that and actually just a visual guide. Plus it just makes it look a little bit more fine-tuned and that distance has really made a difference and I've just kept that consistently up versus not having one. Uh, so it looks a, bit, a little bit odd in the spacing. Uh, so you might have seen that uh, when I click into one of these, I have consistently kept these exclamation marks bolding around that in the formatting and I've sort of kept that set up and then been still using the uh, subtask setup around here so it's actually become even more useful as time has gone on and i'd use the comments as a general uh expander to the detail there so the the benefit to using this is actually i have a strong uh sort of process as i go through each one has that and as you can see it's all planned uh in the subtasks uh, now, I use those labels as a guideline, but the thing that I've probably kept along with is the energy levels. So that's a really simple structure. It's just something that I've developed myself uh, and sort of pulled from other people. But it's actually a really handy routine to have. I can see like the energy levels and the flows and the distance between each task. Although I didn't follow these timings to the exact moment, uh, it gives me a good indicator like uh, I'm going to spend a full hour on that and then I'm going to momentarily quickly jump to that but then go back onto it between 12 and, and 1 o'clock. So these ones are sort of like, um, what I tend to do in my day is I have like really big tasks and I'll set them pretty, like this one will actually probably start at 10.30 because I'll finish these ones. So I tend to overcompensate for a lot of tasks uh, and I'll put them for like 10.30 for example here and I'll do that one until 12. Then I'll jump on this one really briefly for like 15 to 30 minutes so that I can, it's almost like, like the way that I know my productivity works is my brain's quickly, it likes quick succession of tasks because it gets that momentum. So I'll jump on this one, get a few of these done really quickly, and then I'll jump back onto the same task I was doing, mainly because it just keeps that flow. It looks like I'm doing something. It's the same sense that when I, um, when I start my day, just before I start it, I try and do the washing up or something like that. And, and it's like the same way that people, when people wake up, they make their bed. 
It's sort of like one simple thing you get done can really help that like tumble of tasks in momentum. So that's sort of my my logic around having like these tasks dumped. They're fairly short tasks dumped inside of more important tasks during the day. So that's sort of my process with it. And as you can see, I've got a full, I still keep this seven days. So I've got the next seven days planned out all the way down to there. Uh, but I keep this sort of momentum of tasks. I plan the night before with the next day. But my general week is normally planned on a Saturday morning to fully advance that week to make sure that I'm covering absolutely everything. Now, just to note as well, on the last um, the last update on Todoist, uh, they introduced a new font to the Mac, which is really beautiful. It makes everything more readable, easier to view, and things like that. So that has been a nice addition to this experience. So you might have seen that the font is slightly different on this version. I don't think I could go back now. I think this font is the be all and end all, uh, especially that part. Now, you may have seen, uh, I have probably done this down here a bit more, is I've started to bold certain elements of the uh, messages inside of the task. Now, this is pretty handy because what I do here is it clarifies an importance to a certain thing. So, like, for example, a guide, a submit, new, it just, it, they're like flags. It's like just bolding random things. I could do it maybe... As you can see, it just simply makes it bolder in the view and it sort of adds a bit more color to this setup here. So it's just something that uh, I've picked up on and started doing recently. It's nothing real high level of detail. It's just personal. I don't know, it just adds a little bit of a touch to my to-do list list. Now, what I would say on the left-hand side, this is probably the biggest change uh, to my folders. Uh, you may have seen I've gone through like processes of, like review, do, and plan, plan, do, review. Like I've had loads of different ones, and I've sort of settled a bit more recently with um, MIT, do, plan. Uh, you could, I haven't really fully set this up properly yet. I'm still, this has been about a month in testing. You can see that the emojis are a little off. Um, I've got a night emoji for MIT, which shouldn't be anymore. It should be a morning one. Do one should be a midday one and plan should be an evening one. Uh, I don't know. It's just like chronologically, I want to see morning, night, day, uh, morning, morning, day, night uh, in that left hand view. But to be honest, at the moment, I'm not really focusing too much on colorization, although I probably will in the future. Now, just to give you some clarity on how <clears throat> I use these ones, MIT is most important tasks. Do has all of my projects in there, and it has them all listed in sub-projects, which is quite nice. And they're all pretty much the same as they were in the previous ones. And plan, which is my, like, general tickler folder. So I'll explain each one in detail now. So MIT is MIT, my most important task of the day. So at the start, or the day before, I put five, up to five, of my most important activities to complete during the day. Now this is where I can see everything and do. And then at the bottom, I have a learning goal, which is read 10 pages of the book I'm reading at the moment, which is Ikigai. Um, so the way I do this is I simply put a header. So I bold format the edges. And then what I do is put a colon there. Because if you don't put a colon, it becomes a task. If you put a colon, it acts as a header. And this way I can have those up to five down here. Now I still re relate them based on priority level. So obviously they're all the most important tasks of the day. Uh, but they are based on energy levels to complete them. So they're not really based on priority, I guess. They're based on energy levels to complete them. And the same down here, put that colon there and add one of the learning goals for the day. This way I can grab like a bit of time, lunchtime, evening, to complete that task. Uh, and I put day there so it's a bit clearer. So you can see that this is becoming more of a focus folder. I had a focus folder ages ago. I just don't think I was using it properly. So this is my more intense folder, and hopefully it gives you guys some ideas to what you need to do to complete in your day. So I've seemed like I've got a fairly easy day to, to sort of kick things off. As I said, do is just all of the regular folders, but plan is starting to become a place where I drop things for the end of the day or end of the week. I used to have a folder called review. It's just changed to plan now. This is a place where... Things It's like a Sunday Maybe folder, basically. I can just dump things inside this Sunday Maybe folder and review them at the end of the week and see whether it's like beneficial to jump in and do them. So, for example, this one, I actually need to do this one today, so I'm going to bring it up to the inbox. The inbox, I still use the inbox as a dumping ground. Uh, the dumping ground is pretty handy because I can process tasks as I go about my day 
and I keep it pretty simple. There's nothing too intricate about that. Now, uh, before I move on, I just want to give you a short tour of the Karma side of stuff. So, just an update. Uh, I've actually posted this in the Keep Productive Facebook group. So, if you're there, that's pretty cool that you guys got to see it before the video. And if you're not a Ray member, it'd be great to have you there. You can see there, I've kept my daily streak only for 38 days recently. My longest one is, was 300 days. Uh, it was almost a year worth of it. Uh, weekly streak, I'm still on 97 weeks. Again, like, this is just a basis. Um, I actually have a really poor weekly goal of 30 and a weekly daily goal of 5, which I tend to crush anyway. Um, so I probably need to update I'm going to update that in real time to a, a more obtainable one. I'm going to put 8 as my daily goal. Actually, I'm going to put 10 as my daily goal. And my weekly goal can be 100, oh, no, 150. I'm going to put of tasks. And as I said, like... The reason I am probably decently up on karma, there we go, that's a bit more uh, attractive. The reason why I'm decently like attacking ad aggressive on karma is mainly because um, I set them quite low anyway. And as you can see here, I have quite a lot of subtasks which still count towards the karma as you complete them. So I don't just go, okay, I did all of them at once. I go, okay, I recorded this. Okay, I did that. Okay, I did that. Okay, I did that. And it's a good way to get things, the ball rolling, really. So, uh, that's my karma side of stuff. It's pretty simple. Uh, I'll soon be reaching 100, which is pretty impressive uh, of a hit streak. Um, there's not really much other detail. Again, labels I'm using pretty casually, filters using pretty casually. Uh, I've been doing a few experiments with filters recently, but nothing too intricate at all. Um, and something that can just be tweaked over time. Uh, what I'm going to be doing, guys, is I'm going to be doing a full PDF on how I use the new MIT section, uh, mainly because I want to give you some clarity on the benefits of it. As well as what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a Todoist template so you can download it and activate it as a project. You can pin it at the top alongside all of your other ones and it's a good way to get started. So that's going to be available in a PDF format below. So that's free, you don't have to sign up or anything. Just go and try that out. Uh, I want to see what your tactics are with MIT. I'm going to give you sort of hints and what, like whether there's any benefit to it from my side. So just keep me updated on how you use it. It's be great to hear whether that's through email or through comments. Just let me know. Anyway, guys, uh, I hope that gave you a nice overview of the to-do setup. Uh, let me know in comments what you think. Let me know if you can steal a few things, which I love. Just steal what you like. Um, and let me know how you use Todoist in your context. So guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Join the, to subscribe to the YouTube channel and also join the Facebook group. It'd be amazing to have you on both of those. So do that today. Uh, it's free. <laughs> Just join. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much. Make sure you have a great day. Keep productive. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.